On October 14, 12 of the fastest racehorses in the world will jump from the barriers here at the 1200 metre mark at Royal Randwick. The lights on uh, to the big roar of the crowd. They're off and racing. She will rain was a bit tardy out. We'll settle the second last and Bredzel jump fast. In less than one minute and 10 seconds, the winner will cross the finishing post, having earned $100,000 a second. Bredzel for Karen McAvoy, leading all the way. It's early morning track work at Royal Randwick and Adrian Bott, who co-trains with Gay Waterhouse, is overseeing Tullock Lodge's Spring Carnival hopefuls. What is it like working with Adrian Bott? And fabulous. It's given me a long activity in the, in the industry. I had seen that he had the right grounding to be able to take on the business. Could he train? I didn't know. But I just had the right gut feeling with him, and I've always, you know, acted on my gut feeling, and uh, I've, I've drawn an ace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've targeted the race, and, and that doesn't happen overnight. Um, as you said, it's continued to, to gather momentum, and, and, and we sort of really want to set ourselves to, to winning that race, and it takes a, obviously a very talented and, and unique horse to be able to win. It's getting harder each year with the you know, with the prize money and the exposure that it's getting. Hawaii 5 -0 trial this morning, and I've got to say, trialled really, really well. That's correct. He trialled super. He showed enormous gusto. You know, he flew the gates, he took control of the trial. There's a lot of potential there. There's no doubt we haven't seen the best of him yet. Hawaii 5 -0, what a win. My I was thrilled to have a horse in a group one race again. You know, you have in this game, you have feast or famine bit of a famine going on, so I'm come a potential feast. And I think the Everest, it's a great name. It captures the imagination straight away. The Everest is the pinnacle. It's the highest and getting racing, all those things. Just so, so commercially attractive. Well, jockeys never stop training. They're training all year round. A lot of the guys who have to keep their weight under control will be working out every single morning. They'll be riding track work, trials, midweeks, and then on Saturdays as well. And those Saturdays, those race mornings, when they might have to get their weight down to a, a point that's usually a little unnatural for them, they could spend you know up to an hour in the spa. Tommy Berry is one of the most talented riders in Australia. Everything that he's overcome in his lifetime has made him a better, stronger person and I'm sure the, the proof will be in the pudding when he returns to race riding. I'm sure it's going to make him a better, stronger jockey as well. Why to Willica? Why did you keep him? Well, I remember him when I was riding his racehorse. He was just so laid back and I thought for my kids to learn on and for myself as well, just have a bit of fun on. Champion jockey Tommy Berry is preparing to return to race riding after serving a seven month ban for contravening racing's rules. The disqualification period has changed Tommy in many ways. You're looking really fit and you're, you're back in riding trim, so to speak. What about mentally? How, how tough was it for you? Yeah, mentally it was tough. I think, you know, obviously accepting what had happened um, was the hardest part. And once I got past that, um, and owning up to, to what had happened. The way I feel now mentally, um, I'm very clear in the head and it's, it's just given me the time that I probably needed. It's been a race that every jockey wants to get a ride in and I've been very lucky to, to get some nice rides in the race and hopefully Marzu can take me one closer this year. Last year, Marzu was great yeah. in the Everest. Given his breeding and his mm. physical attributes, mm. is his best ahead of him? Oh, I think it is, Ray. I, I just think last prep was a lot of really good grounding, solid racing. Having Marzu already locked in that Everest slot, does it yeah. make your, your and Paul jobs a little bit easier? We've got the luxury now where he's just take our time and working through it and get him up slowly and then have his bot on and hopefully come on the day. With $20 million prize money at stake, every jockey in Australia would love a seat on an Everest horse. Some have secured their spot. While others, some of the best jockeys in the world, are still looking for that seat in the saddle.
Tommy Berry, great to see him back at the races. He had an early win too in the Jim Crack Stakes on Manala Group 3 race, so he's filling on top of the world. It's good to see Craig Williams back at Ramwick. Of course, Giga Kick is out of the Everest as well, but Craig Williams will put Bella Nipotina through her paces in the Premier Stakes, and who knows, he might get an Everest ride yet. Yeah, of course I was disappointed. I love the horse. We've had a great result. You know, you win the Everest on him. These type of situations, as much as they can be disappointing professionally, life for us is lucky enough if it can continue to go on. How important is this Premier Stakes today? Massive, Matty. We're going to see for the first time this season, think about it, only two weeks out from the race. He hasn't raced since June, so an important race from the most outstanding sprinter, I think, in Australia, and a deserved Everest favourite. And then we've got Gay, of course, still trying to get her horses in. Just two, two runners today, alcohol-free and away 5 -0. What are their chances? Alcohol-free, that's the horse at Yulong. Spent $10 million to buy her from England with the main purpose to run in the Everest. So I think a top three finish is crucial for her to earn that slot. Hawaii 5 probably in a must-win situation, Matt. Think about it, short arms are up and racing. He jumped only fairly, think about it. And Athelry bounded out of the gates in front from the stablemate Zapateo, who's right up there on the inside of Alcohol Free. The Way 5 0 taken back, followed by Bella Nipotina. Alcohol Free in restricted room, and Hawaii 5 0 is running on really well down the outside. Think about it, went up the inside to join Zapateo. Hawaii 5 0 wide out, and then Bella Nipotina running on. It's Think About It all out. Hawaii 5 0, think about it. Hawaii 5 0 lunges. Oh, close here. Think about it, we'll win it. He felt like I brought him here today with some improvement in him. He'll need to improve again in a couple of links, a couple of links in two weeks, but I think he will. Adrian, great run Hawaii 5-0. Where does that leave him now, Read the Everest? I think he's obviously put in a performance that screams he, he, he should be in consideration. Great mistakes, great race, Ray. Think about it. He showed why he's the Everest favourite. Got a little bit tired the last 100 metres and you just see who was coming out wide. Hawaii 5 -0. Owned by Jerry Harvey, John Singleton and Ray Hadley. Massive run. Can he get into the race? I think he can. Mm. Stay tuned next 48 hours or so as the potentially a deal's done to get Hawaii 5 -0 in. The Everest jigsaw puzzle is finally complete. Aquas Farm has chosen Hawaii 5 -0 to run in their slot and he will be ridden by James McDonald, Sydney's champion jockey. Chris Waller has locked in golden pendant winner Espiona. And Coolmore has selected their own sprinter, golden super winner Shinzo, also trained by Waller. And finally, Yulong Investments have made their move selecting their own mare, alcohol free, to be ridden by last year's Everest winner, Craig Williams. The best jeweler in Sydney is Chironi. So we went to him and he designed our championship trophies. And I went to him and I said, I want this trophy that is unheard of. I want it with diamonds, it's got to have bling, it's got to have everything. The Melbourne Cup, it is beautiful, there's no, uh, but it's just a cup, you know what I mean? There's hardly an imagination on it. And instead, what we have achieved, they were saying in uh, Ascot this year, they were saying it's the best trophies in the world. And the trophy's got how many diamonds? It's 8,000 diamonds, but the horse, it's in four pieces. There's also two rubies. That's actually yeah. Peter Valente's idea. He wanted two rubies in the eye because he wanted the power of the horse. The great thing about the Tab Everest is it's certainly been innovative and, and attracting a different new audience. It brings something different to the racing calendar. It's now an integral part of spring and a really fun part of spring. The barrier draw is crucial, Matty. For example, Peter Moody's got the favourite, I wish I win, and he told me during the week he doesn't want to draw an inside barrier. In his words, I don't want a low gate. And then we've got Bjorn Baker. He's as cool as a cucumber. Yeah, because Bjorn's got the only horse in the race who was a noted front runner, and that's overpassed. Every year the barrier draw is bigger and better again. What's racing New South Wales got in store tonight?
have every barrier draw. The first horse out is Marzu. Barrier 11, Ray. Tommy Berry is the rider. Think about it. Barrier 5. Barrier 5, think about it. Joe Pride, one of two runners. Sam Clippin and the rider. Cylinder. Barrier 4 favours Cylinder, who's going to go forward. Zach Lloyd, the apprentice, riding in their first Everest. I wish I win. Here is the favourite. Barrier one. He didn't want that low gate. Espiona. Barrier three for the mayor. Huey Bowman having his sixth ride in an Everest. Overpass. Fastest horse out of the gates. Barrier two. Bjorn Baker and Josh Parr. Shinzo. Barrier six. Karen McAvoy, the only jockey to have ridden in all seven Everest. Here is Hawaii 5-0. Barrier 10 for Hawaii 5-0. And he has got that man in the saddle, James McDonald. Private eye. Barrier 9 for Private Eye, Buenos Noches. Barrier 8, Dylan Gibbons with his first ride, alcohol free. Barrier 7, Craig Williams will ride for Gay and Adrian. And here is our final horse to reveal in secret. She has drawn the outside barrier. Zach Purton, the champion of Hong Kong, to come back and ride for Godolphin. So, Ray, the barrier draw set us up perfectly for a wide open race on October the 14th. Can't wait for it. It's been a huge build up. I think, think about it's in the position to win, but these are 12 of the best sprinters in world racing. This is going to be one spectacular sprint. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.